The first edition of Micrographia by Robert Hooke, published by the Royal Society in 1665. I'd like to show it to you. I'm Adam Douglas with Peter Harrington. And uh, we can see here the book was published by the Royal Society. And the first edition is dated there on the title page, 1665. And opposite it is the, the license leaf, or uh, sometimes called the imprimatur, which is the permission to print it on behalf of the Royal Society. The Royal Society um, had only recently been founded, and this is one of the first books published by the Royal Society. Um, and it's titled Micrographia, or some physiological descriptions of minute bodies made by magnifying glasses. And what happened in the 17th century, at the beginning of the 17th century, you had Galileo famously got his telescope and looked up at the moons of Jupiter and made great discoveries. And Robert Hooke, who was um, a leading member of the Royal Society, in effect turned the telescope the other way. And he was using a microscope for the first time to look down into some of the hidden details of life. And uh, his uh, microscope is illustrated here in the book in one of the folding plates for which the book is famous. Fold out like this. And there's his microscope. And basically, Robert Hooke was like a, a kid with a new toy. He'd, uh, he'd got his new microscope, and he pointed it at just about anything that he could see. Uh, and all the world around him, which he'd previously seen through his ordinary eyes, was revealed in all its glory. The most famous plate is this one here, this folding plate, which gradually reveals itself, and that is the flea. And there's an irony, of course, that uh, at the same time he was looking at the flea, uh, the flea was busy spreading the bubonic plague around London. So it's a, <laughs> there's a historical irony there. But you can see the intense detail um, in these plates. And remember that nobody had seen them before. Uh, Samuel Pepys talks about in his diary about buying this book, taking it home, and spending all night staring at the detail, things he'd never seen before. Some of the plates are even bigger than that. The next one is a, a particularly lovely one of a louse. Great big folding plate there with all the detail for us to see for the first time. So it really was a new world that he was exploring. Um, Christopher Wren was involved with the Royal Society as well, and he is believed to have had a hand in preparing these plates for the press. There we see an ant. And although people must have had some idea of what an ant looked like, to see the detail for the first time, those little hairs on the ant, and the, the way its feet work, the, the uh, proboscis, the jaws. Quite extraordinary to see all this for the first time. And it really had, you know, there are very few books that have that effect, that really, they enable you to see the world afresh for the first time. There's a little feather there, showing the way feathers are, uh, are uh, arranged. And also, he actually includes in the book even some, uh, this is the microcosm, as it were. He also includes a little bit of the macrocosm. Here he is discussing the craters of the moon, again, with the same attention to detail and the same scientific rigor. So it really is one of the most exciting books um, in science. It's a, it's a large folio. This copy is uh, in very good condition. You can imagine the way the, f the plates are, are put together. They're almost randomly inserted in the book. There are different sizes, different folds. And quite often, the famous plates, like the louse, will be badly torn and repaired. Now, this one here has a little tear at the weakest point of the plate. But it's, not, uh, it's otherwise clean. And it's really, for this book, a really very good copy indeed. The book is from the library <clears throat> of the Society of Writers to the Signet in Edinburgh, which is a legal society in Edinburgh. And uh, it has its gilt supra libros on the covers there. The copy we have has actually been rebacked. Um, the spine has been replaced. 
there's no way around it with a book like this from this date, uh, 17th century book that's been read over and over again. It's the kind of book you want to open and pour over. Uh, eventually, the uh, leather on the joints gives way. And so it's been replaced, but uh, it's been done handsomely into style. And it's an extremely nice copy of one of the most famous books in the history of science. There are details about it on our website, Peter Harrington, uh, and contact details if you'd like to discuss it with us.